John Cox, who's an economic historian out of Chicago, Illinois, and he always told people, never invest in the story on page one. That's the efficient market. Invest in the story on page 16, that's headed to page one. So we talked about this pivot into uh, electrification. We talk about people are acknowledging that. We know about the enablers. But when they get together at these great gatherings of energy minds, the CEOs, the OPEC, the ministers, uh, I would suggest to you that one of the great gatherings is at Dan Jurgen Sarah Week, happens in Houston, Texas in early March. Uh, the 2018 gathering, the, the common theme I think was electrification. Did you know the word copper was not mentioned? Didn't get a line item. So it's something that I believe is going to become a page one story and then it, it's going to happen very quickly where just one day to the next it becomes, it already is a consensus trade, but it's a consensus trade to who? We in the industry, it's a love-in. It's the other people that have to acknowledge this. And it's like musical chairs. Unless you have a premium, there's never gonna be a premium on that product. For example, if there's 99 people trying to sit in 100 chairs, never a premium. But the second that pivot takes place and you have 101 or 102 people trying to sit in those 100 chairs, Premium. Remember what happened in Grasberg, October 203, when the pit collapsed? People were scrambling for copper metal. We're going through a, a window of time because of the lack of investment in this really long protracted bear market. After Cobra Panama, which is being commissioned in 2018, 2019, there's going to be about three years with no major copper mines going online. I'm talking about over 100,000 tons a year. This is going to happen in parallel at the same time as what I believe is this realization that the future of energy is electricity, and the enabler is copper. And that's why you need to be, um, investors need to be positioned, and at least following it, following it like a Harlequin romance on a day-to-day -day basis, because uh, this is coming to, a, as Robert Friedland says, to a theater near you. That's a question that people always ask. What is the future price of any commodity gonna be? That's a mugs game. We need to think about it like engineers. So we know that in the China super cycle, we as an industry, I have many friends in the, in the copper mining business that make the decisions, we invested over $100 billion looking for future resources and reserves. Very little success. In the days after Pinochet left the, the military dictatorship in Chile, it was the golden era of exploration, Peru, Chile, other places in the world. Over 100 discoveries, over a trillion pounds of copper found. We spent more money in the last cycle hundred billion dollars. There were only nine major discoveries, around 300 billion pounds. So just because the copper price goes higher, I don't think the industry is going to throw money at global adventures looking for copper where they kind of already went. They're going to go back and reassess the situation. And you're going to look at places like Copper Bank, all of our projects are situated in places where the worker will go home at the end of the day. I cannot underline the importance of that. If you're in the Andes, the workforce has to be flown in and out. It's gonna be at elevation, and that is the future of copper mining. And what is the future grade? Well, based on the reserves that we have and what we found, it's gonna be 0.4 and 0.5% copper ore. So where's the price of copper gonna go the long way around in your answer? It's all about engineering. If copper was to go back to $4 a pound, that would be about $8,800 based on an LME per ton price. If it's 1% ore, that ton of ore is worth $88. But the future of copper mining is 0.4, which means you get about $35 a ton. You pay for your TC, your RC, your CapEx, the workforce in and out, it's barely a margin. Now what about the other projects that don't have these ben the benefit of having existing infrastructure, water, workforce, mining culture. I will suggest to you that we are, as an industry or as a society, we are going to have to have the ability to make 0.3 and 0.4 copper ore economic with a 25 or 30 percent IRR. That tells me that the price of copper is going to have to be 12, 13, 14 thousand dollars a ton. That would be well in excess of five dollars a pound. And it's not that I have a crystal ball, the engineering tells me because we already spent the hundred billion looking for more, that's the grade. To convert those resources to reserves, if, if 
if society wants copper, and I think we're going to need it for the future of electrification, that's where I believe the copper price is going to have to end up. Otherwise, we're simply not going to have the amount of copper that's going to be required by society. Thank you.